Hello, welcome to Thor Talk, the show all about Marvel's resident God of Thunder. On this episode of Thor Talk, we will be analyzing situations, motivations, and character to determine which side Thor would take if he was in Captain America Civil War. This is a discussion about the movies, not the comics. So let's begin with this episode of Thor Talk. I am Thor the Thunderer, son of Odin, prince of Asgard. And this world is under my protection! In Captain America Civil War, the Avengers are split down the middle with a choice as to whether or not to sign with the government. However, Thor was absent from this discussion as he was off searching for the Infinity Stones. But if he had been on Earth, which side would he have taken? Firstly, Thor cannot truly stay neutral in this conflict, as many have suggested. While the governments of Earth will have no way to prosecute him if he refuses to sign, his refusal to sign will mean they won't allow him to remain an Avenger, as the Avengers will now become a government-operated team, and they won't allow someone to remain on the team if they're not going to work for them. Especially if that someone is Thor, who the world just saw destroy a city. So Thor has two choices leave the Avengers and abandon his friends, or pick a side. He will likely pick a side, which would mean he now has two more choices, sign or don't sign. Many take it for granted that Thor would choose to side with Captain America and refuse to sign the Accords. However, others have argued that Thor would want to keep himself in check after the lesson he learned in the first Thor movie. Would Thor's desire to keep him from becoming a warmongering god again lead to him signing a document that would keep his powers in check? I don't think so. For this to work, Thor would need to trust that a group of politicians that he's never met would have enough foresight and common sense to tell him what he should do. It states that the Avengers shall no longer be a private organization. Instead, they'll operate under the supervision of a United Nations panel only when and if that panel deems it necessary. What if this panel sends us somewhere we don't think we should go? What if there's somewhere we need to go and they don't let us? If there was evil on Earth, Thor could only act with the approval of the government, and if there was something that Thor didn't see a problem with, he could still be forced to intervene by the governments of the world. In Thor The Dark World, Thor openly defied a direct command from Odin because he believed what he was doing was right. If Thor won't let his father and king stop him from doing hero work, then the God of Thunder most certainly won't allow himself to be held back from doing what's right by a couple of politicians that he doesn't even know. Plus, Thor's relationships with Stark and Captain America are quite different. Thor has a tendency to disagree with Stark, sometimes to an extreme, whereas Thor seems to be much closer with Captain America possibly the closest out of all the Avengers, as the two often work together and have similar mindsets. Also on a side note, in the comics Thor says that he considers Captain America to be the greatest Avenger. Even if Thor doesn't outright side with Captain America at the beginning, I think that Captain America would call on him when he called in Hawkeye and Ant-Man at the airport. A quick explanation of the super assassins that Zemo is pursuing should be enough to convince Thor to be Team Cap. So, in the end, the God of Thunder would likely find himself on Captain America's side. Well, that's all for this episode of Thor Talk. If you want to keep up with and support Thor Talk, simply subscribe. You can also follow Thor Talk on Instagram, at Thor Talk. Once again, I'd like to formally state that all art and video is owned by its respected companies, and I own none of it. With that said, see you next time on Thor Talk, where... Behold in breathless wonder!